Hey everybody, I'm back with a new video. This time, I'm gonna do a lens review. I've got two new lenses here from a company called SLR Magic. They've recently been making micro four thirds lenses and the first one here is their 12 millimeter T1.6 Hyper Prime Wide Angle for micro four thirds. The other is a newer lens. It's their 25 millimeter T.95 lens, which I had pre-ordered a while ago. It took some time to get here, but it's finally here, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. So I've had the 12 millimeter for a little while. It was released sometime last year, but I only got it recently. And uh, I was really interested in getting an all manual lens, which this lens is. It's kind of an odd shape. Uh, it's all metal design though, and it's actually pretty heavy uh, comparatively. And I can actually show you a comparison between this lens and a lens I've done a previous video on, uh, the 14mm f2.5 from Panasonic with uh, their wide angle adapter attached to it. The thing that makes this lens so appealing to me though at least, compared to the 14mm is that first of all it's got a lower f-stop and SLR Magic uses t-stops which is a cinematic term as opposed to f-stops this is a t1.6 lens I think that really amounts to like an f1.4 so first of all it's a better low light lens compared to the 2.5 f-stop on the Lumix and something that's really cool you can't really see but uh, promise you it's there is that the aperture is clickless so if you're a DSLR user, you're probably used to most lenses when you change the f-stop, it clicks, the aperture clicks or snaps into place and you can see in the video that it's abrupt stops like as you change it. With a clickless aperture ring like on the SLR Magic, you're able to just turn it and there's no clicking sound. It's absolutely silent and if you were able to look inside the lens, you could see that it's turning smoothly, the blades just just open and close to the desired aperture without that clicking so you can actually use it in video now when you're shooting you don't have to see the aperture changing you can kind of adjust it and it'll look similar to like an auto uh, exposure setting on a camera the other thing that I like about it is that it's much better in low light we're talking f1.4 equivalent with this t1.6 rating this Lumix 2.5 I bought it initially as opposed to getting the SLR Magic because it was more affordable. But I've experienced limitations of the 2.5 at this point, specifically on a local TV show that I'm working on. We shoot a lot of indoor music performances and the 2.5 is, is just barely, barely cutting it. I'm having to boost my ISO up pretty high. So next season when we use the SLR Magic, I'm hoping to keep my ISO levels pretty low and uh, avoid digital noise and stuff that comes from uh, higher ISO shooting. The next lens that I got and that I pre-ordered in a much larger box is the 25mm T.95 Hyper Prime also called a Cine lens. They've got a new line that they are terming Cine lenses and you'll see why when I open it up. There's really nothing different about the lens or the glass itself other than that you get these little focus, where the focus and the aperture rings are, you get these little grooves so that you can directly connect a follow focus without having to use a belt or anything to attach it. So those grooves are built into the, into the rings on the lens. Now this lens, first of all, just looking at the box, they've treated this guy a lot more differently. And this lens goes into direct competition with the Voigt Lander 25mm .95 as well. I don't have the Voigtlander. It was way out of my price range, something I always kind of wanted. And when SLR Magic released the exact same focal length lens, I thought, well, I think I'll go for this one. It was $7.99, but if you pre-ordered it, you got a $150 rebate right away. So that helped out a lot and was a big incentive in me getting it. You can see on the front here, it's actually got a built-in lens hood that snaps forwards and backwards. Not a lot of uh, protection there, but you can see, you know, it's attached to the lens body, the barrel uh, itself. It's kind of annoying in a way. I doubt I'll ever use it, but it gets in the way of 
screwing off the lens cap, which is kind of inconvenient, uh, but it's not the end of the world and uh, certainly just a small, small issue at the moment. The build is similar to the 12 millimeter. It's all metal, it's very solid, it's got some heft to it, some real weight. The aperture is also clickless, just like the 12 millimeter. And that T.95 is really going to make this a low light performer. But there are some trade-offs. I'll start with the 12 millimeter. I was a little disappointed to see how soft it is, completely wide open. And uh, it's, it's not unusable, but you really do want to stop down to about F2 to avoid two things. Firstly being the softness. Uh, that you get around uh, images, you know the the line delineation. It's not it's not very uh, it's not very sharp. It kind of gets soft and hazy looking when it's full open. So stopping down the two helps out a little bit with that. The other problem is the flare issue, and people have talked about this. And SLR Magic is very aware. They even include in the box some uh, documentation about the flare, uh, telling you to stop down to two is what it says on the document. Uh, to avoid the flaring, but really I think it does surpass the 14 millimeter uh, Lumix lens. It's not quite as sharp, but even at f2 it's helping me out a little bit better in low light situations. The 25 millimeter, that one has impressed me the most. It's not entirely as sharp probably as my Lumix 20 millimeter, but the ability to be able to see that much in low light and in dark scenes is, is really amazing and I think this is probably my new favorite lens. These lenses seem to be more film-like to me and uh, they kind of have a softness but it's an organic softness about the image so it really depends on what you're going for. I may not use these two on corporate video shoots, probably stick with the Lumix glass for that, but for short films or anything that needs just a little bit of, a, a little bit of character to it, I would recommend these lenses entirely. So. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below and I'll have another video up soon. See you later.